I bought the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X 3D a few months back to upgrade the 5600X in my system, and I've been meaning to do a comparison video to see how much extra gaming performance the 5700X 3D gives me over the 5600X. And in today's video, that's what I'll be doing. Note though that this benchmark won't show the full difference in processing power between the 5600X and 5700X 3D, as the RX 7800 XT I'm using in my system will still be the bottleneck in many games, especially at higher resolutions. However, there are a lot of gamers out there like me who currently have an older AM4 CPU and have it paired with a mid-range graphics card who are considering a CPU upgrade. And they might be wondering what kind of a gaming performance boost they can get by upgrading to the 5700X 3D. Right now you can get the 5700X 3D for just a little over $200 on both Amazon and Newegg. It's an eight core 16 thread processor that's main selling point is that it features AMD's 3D vCache technology. This technology essentially allows AMD to get more L3 cache onto their chips. This extra L3 cache gives AMD's X3D CPUs quick access to larger amounts of important files. And in certain games, especially games that are CPU heavy, this feature can lead to a significant boost in your in-game performance. The other unique selling point of the 5700X 3D for existing AM4 system owners is that it isn't too power hungry, and so most users can drop it into their systems without needing a motherboard upgrade. And as we saw in my last video where I compared a few different budget CPU cooler options, the 5700X 3D doesn't run too hot and you can cool it easily with a budget friendly single tower cooler. So it's a very convenient and very affordable CPU upgrade option for users who currently have an AM4 system. I tested the combination of the 5700X 3D and RX 7800 XT and the 5600X and RX 7800 XT in nine different games at both 1080p and 1440p resolution. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 1080p resolution, the 5700X 3D and RX 7800 XT combination was able to deliver an average frame rate of 139 frames per second at the Ultra preset with 1% lows of 94 frames per second. Dropping down to the very high and high presets, the combo hit over 150 and 160 frames per second respectively, with 1% lows exceeding 100 frames per second. In contrast, the Ryzen 5 5600X, when paired with the RX 7800 XT, delivered 136 frames per second on average at the Ultra preset, with 1% lows of 86 frames per second. And at 1440p resolution, the performance between the two CPUs was nearly identical, with both CPUs averaging around 113 frames per second at the Ultra preset. The 5700X 3D did provide nearly 10% better performance at the 1% lows at 1080p resolution on the Ultra preset though, and that should help smooth out gameplay. But overall, Valhalla isn't a game where you're going to see a big boost in performance by switching to the 5700X 3D from the 5600X. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora was another game where there wasn't a significant difference between these two CPUs. But Avatar is a heavily GPU bound game, and so that's not a huge surprise. Both CPUs averaged a little over 80 frames per second at the Ultra preset at 1080p resolution, with 1% lows in the mid 60s. And both pairings could hit over 100 frames per second by dropping down to the high preset. At 1440p resolution, both combinations averaged just over 60 frames per second at the Ultra preset, with 1% lows in the lower 50s. So yet another game where you won't see a big difference if you were to upgrade to the 5700X 3D. However, in Baldur's Gate 3, we see our first title where the 5700X 3D delivers a substantial increase in performance. At the Ultra preset, the combination of the 5700X 3D and RX 7800 XT was able to deliver an average frame rate of 169 frames per second with 1% lows of 87 frames per second. That's a 30% increase in the average frame rate and a 7% increase in the 1% lows over the 5600X, which averaged 130 frames per second at the Ultra preset, with 1% lows of 81 frames per second. There was even a significant performance increase at 1440p resolution, with the 5700X 3D performing 18% better than the 5600X at the Ultra preset, where the 5700X 3D averaged 129 frames per second, and the 5600X averaged 109 frames per second. It's important to note though that the 5600X didn't perform poorly in Baldur's Gate 3. An average frame rate of 130 frames per second at 1080p resolution and 110 frames per second at 1440p resolution is very good, especially in a more story-driven title like Baldur's Gate 3 is. But as Baldur's Gate 3 is a bit more CPU intensive, it does show off how much performance you can potentially gain with the 5700X 3D 
in games that are CPU bound. Borderlands 3 was another game where the 5700X 3D really pulled ahead of the 5600X, not just in average frame rate, but in the 1% lows as well. At 1080p resolution at the Ultra preset, the 5700X 3D and RX 7800 XT delivered an average frame rate of 137 frames per second, with 1% lows of 101 frames per second. In contrast, the 5600X and 7800 XT provided an average frame rate of 119 frames per second, with 1% lows of 78 frames per second. So that's a 15% better average frame rate and 30% better 1% lows for the 5700X 3D over the 5600X. At 1440p resolution, the 5700X 3D and RX 7800 XT averaged 112 frames per second at the Ultra preset, with 1% lows of 89 frames per second. And the 5600X averaged 105 frames per second, with 1% lows of 77 frames per second. That comes out to a 7% advantage for the 5700X 3D for the average frame rate, and a 16% increase to the 1% lows, which is a very nice boost at the higher resolution. In Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p resolution, the 5700X 3D didn't offer any significant advantage over the 5600X at the Ray Tracing Ultra preset, and on the surface, it only provided a small 6% performance gain on the average frame rate at the non-Ray Tracing preset, averaging 151 frames per second to the 5600X's 142 frames per second. However, the 5700X 3D did provide a 32% increase in the 1% lows at the ultra non-ray tracing preset with 103 frames per second, compared to the 5600X's 1% lows of 78 frames per second. That's a pretty big difference in 1% lows and one that will help the 5700X 3D running Cyberpunk 2077 a bit more smoothly than the 5600X will. At 1440p resolution, there was virtually no difference between the two CPUs in terms of average frame rate, but the 5700X 3D did offer about 15% better 1% lows at the ultra and high presets, with the 5700X 3D hitting 85 FPS on the 1% lows, and the 5600X hitting 75 FPS on the 1% lows at the ultra preset. Metro Exodus is a very GPU heavy game, and so it was another title where we didn't see any difference between the 5700X 3D and 5600X. The performance between the two CPUs is virtually the same at both resolutions and across all settings. While it might not make sense to benchmark games like this, I think it's important to show that there are games out there that aren't going to run better with a CPU upgrade. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the 5700X 3D provided a noticeable increase in performance, especially as we turned settings down a bit and took some of the load off of the GPU. At 1080p resolution, at ultra settings, the 5700X 3D averaged 133 frames per second, with 1% lows of 87 frames per second. The 5600X averaged 128 frames per second, with 1% lows of 65 frames per second. So the 5700X 3D only provided a 4% boost to the average frame rate at the ultra settings over the 5600X. However, it did provide a whopping 33% increase in the 1% lows. At the higher and medium settings, the 5700X 3D's advantage became even bigger. At the higher settings, for example, the 5700X 3D provided 18% more performance at the average frame rate, and it gave a 36% boost to the 1% lows. Even at 1440p resolution, the 5700X 3D helped to deliver a more stable gaming experience, providing a 7% increase in the average frame rate at the ultra settings, and a 16% increase in the average frame rate at the higher settings. The 5700X 3D also delivered 26% better 1% lows at the ultra settings, and 38% better 1% lows at the higher settings. So overall, Red Dead is going to run much more smoothly on the 5700X 3D than it will on the 5600X thanks to the higher 1% lows. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider, in this older title we again see virtually no difference between the 5600X and 5700X 3D. Both CPUs were able to deliver a near 90 frame per second experience at 1080p resolution at the highest preset with ray tracing set to ultra, although the 5700X 3D did offer a slight bump in both the average frame rate and 1% lows. At 1440p resolution though, the performance was basically equal, and both CPUs performed within a couple of frames per second of each other across all of the settings we tested the game at. So no real advantage to be had in Tomb Raider when jumping from the 5600X to the 5700X 3D. Finally, in Starfield, we saw another instance where the 5700X 3D offered a small boost to the average frame rate, but a significant increase in the 1% low performance. At 1080p resolution at the Ultra preset, the 5700X 3D delivered an average of 86 frames per second, 
with 1% lows of 67 frames per second. The 5600X provided 78 frames per second with 1% lows of 59 frames per second. So that's a 10% performance advantage for the 5700X 3D on the average frame rate and a 14% advantage on the 1% lows. With FrameGen turned on, the 5700X 3D provided close to a 10% better average frame rate, but it offered an insane 40% better performance at the 1% lows. At 1440p resolution, the differences were less significant for the average frame rate, but the 5700X 3D offered much better 1% lows. At the Ultra preset, the two CPUs performed within 5 frames per second of each other, but in all other settings I tested, that's the high preset, the Ultra preset with FrameGen turned on, and the high preset with FrameGen turned on, the 5700X 3D provided a 20% or greater performance advantage in the 1% lows. Okay, so now the question is, is it worth it to upgrade from the 5600X or an older AM4 CPU to the 5700X 3D? And to answer that question, it's really going to depend a lot on your personal preferences and what games you play. Now this test looked at the difference between the 5600X and the 5700X 3D, but if you're using an older AM4 CPU, the case to upgrade to the 5700X 3D is going to be even greater. But as you can see from some of the games I tested, there wasn't a universal increase in performance to be had by jumping up to the 5700X 3D from the 5600X. In some games, especially in the GPU heavy titles I tested, like Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and Metro Exodus, there wasn't any difference between the 5600X and 5700X 3D at all. And if those are the kinds of games you mainly play, you may not benefit all that much by upgrading to a 5700X 3D. On the other hand, if you play games that utilize the CPU more, like Baldur's Gate 3 or Borderlands 3 from this benchmark, there is a lot of extra performance to be gained by upgrading. Furthermore, there are going to be some games where the 5700X 3D won't provide a significant boost to the average frame rate, but it will provide substantially better 1% lows, and having those higher 1% lows will make for a much smoother experience. So if you are considering upgrading to the 5700X 3D, my best advice for you would be to check game-specific benchmarks for the games you play and see how the 5700X 3D performs in those particular titles, making note of both the average frame rate and the 1% lows, and then comparing that to the performance you are currently getting in those titles. Another question you'll need to ask yourself is, even if there is a performance advantage for the 5700X 3D in those games you play, is it a big enough advantage to where it's going to improve your in-game experience significantly enough to justify the cost of the upgrade? Taking Baldur's Gate 3 as an example, I saw a substantial increase in the average frame rate by going from the 5600X to the 5700X 3D. At 1080p resolution, it was the difference between averaging 169 frames per second at the Ultra preset with the 5700X 3D and averaging 130 frames per second with the 5600X. But is Baldur's Gate 3 really the type of game where the in-game experience is going to be improved by running it at 169 frames per second as opposed to running it at 130 frames per second? Personally, I don't think the experience will be that much better, especially since the 1% lows were still fairly close to each other. It's just not the style of game that needs a really high frame rate in order to enjoy. However, there are games out there where those extra frames will matter. For example, if you mainly play competitive shooters on a high refresh rate display, and the 5700X 3D offers you a 10-20% to better average frame rate, along with much better 1% lows, that would likely improve your in-game experience as any extra frames you can get in a competitive shooter are typically worth it. So there are different factors you should consider before you commit to upgrading to the 5700X 3D. And whether or not you should make that upgrade is going to come down to the kinds of games you play, what performance expectations you have for those games, and whether or not the upgrade to the 5700X 3D will fulfill those expectations. Ultimately though, the 5700X 3D is a great CPU and has given users still in the AM4 platform a cheaper and more convenient upgrade path than compared to jumping up to the AM5 platform which will require not only a new CPU, but also a new motherboard and memory as well. But in any case, that does it for this video. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time.